Hey guys, so today we have an update on a story that I talked about not too long ago and it is the It Ends With Us, Blake Lively, Justin Baldoni drama that I talked about. Now, I can't give too much of a recap only because the story is quite long and obviously there are past videos that I've made on it. So this is the everything you need to know about the messy It Ends With Us drama from two weeks ago and you guys can obviously go and watch that if you so please and that will give you all 33 minutes of what has happened there are more updates and i think it's gonna be probably the last we're gonna hear of this and i kind of have this thing where i can see drama before it happens because i've seen so much of it and i think this will either just die down and the second movie will just never come out or it will just softly quietly get passed on to someone else to produce and direct so justin will probably get cut out of it honestly because i think colleen would rather have this movie be made by blake lively because she's like the a-list celebrity big name this lighting is absolutely crazy or we're gonna see this blow up you know a few months down the line they go to produce the second movie and it is just like mayhem okay because justin bardoni and blake lively are just not getting along now the main point you guys have to remember is the way he has promoted the movie versus the way she has promoted the movie he has focused on dv and how this affects women <clears throat> mainly because this is a m male to like woman story so he's focused on how this will um affect women and you know all the women that could be watching this movie and how they could be feeling if they're going through the same thing or something similar he has posted resources he has worked with charities and organizations you know that whole thing she has uh talked about how much of her designer clothing is in the movie she has used this to promote her hair care line she's used to promote her uh, drinks line that she has even as much as making like movie character themed alcoholic beverages and they're all named after different characters including ryle who is literally the abuser in this movie bear in mind a lot of dv happens because of um, alcohol abuse so to have your alcohol brand make character themed alcoholic beverages uh, when it's a movie about dv and domestic violence tends to be heightened because of like it's just crazy to me okay every interview is talking about what shoes she's wearing what outfit she's wearing her husband's movie ryan reynolds just came out with um at the same time a wolverine movie and it was they were trying to make it this whole like barbenheimer thing which i mean his movie's doing really well and i think this movie did really well as well but they tried to make it this whole barbenheimer thing wear florals to the movie because the cover of the book is florals but the movie's literally about dv a bunch of influencers that got invited to watch this movie clearly didn't know what it was about because they would say things like oh my god there's like hot guys on screen grab your girls and wear florals to watch this movie and it was just despicable to watch so this whole thing justin was villainized by people that is the public that is blake lively that is the rest of the cast i still think Unless something massive comes out, I think Blake Lively messed up with maybe picking this role for the kind of person that she is. Like, if she knew that she wouldn't take it seriously enough, why would you even bother? I guess is my whole problem with this. Since then, more has come out. Justin obviously has gotten, like, crisis management, and it is the same crisis management that Johnny Depp has used, which people are using against him to be like, oh, see, you're one of the bad guys. I just think maybe they're just, like, the best in the game considering how well Johnny Depp came out of that situation versus Amber Heard. And, but it's not a good look, obviously, mainly with the DV aspect of things. But he has gone into crisis management and people, sources have seemingly been dosing stories about Justin to the media. One being that he was like super sexist on set. Um, there was nothing really to justify that though. Like there wasn't like any story to go along with it. It was just like cast thinks he's sexist. Then there was the he kissed Blake too long in a scene and then there was the he talked to his trainer about how heavy Blake was like he asked his trainer how heavy is Blake lively because I have a back injury and I'm gonna have to lift her in one of the scenes how can I do it safely and she felt like that was fat shaming so that's kind of that aspect of things and then on the other side we obviously have the Blake lively interview with that interviewer that asked her about her bump fully well knowing at the time that Blake lively was about like eight months pregnant so obviously she was like heavily pregnant it was public news she has spoken about this she has never had an issue with this uh the interviewer asks how's your little bump and Blake Lively takes this moment to basically be like how's your little bump and then the woman asks about um this period movie that they were in asks about how it was to be wearing those costumes bit of a shit question really but like it makes sense for the movie I'm not saying it's a shit question I'm just saying it like it wasn't like the most fascinating question but it, it made sense for the type of movie that it was with the outfit and Blake and her 
co-star take the moment to be basically be like modern feminists and be like would you ask a man this question and now while she's promoting this movie about domestic violence she only talks about the outfits so this is crazy to me that back then she made it this like feminist sexist issue to be asked about outfits but now that she has the time to prove that and stand by that and only talk about the themes of this movie and the organization she does nothing but talk about her outfits how how the how the cookie crumbles that's the recap i actually didn't want to talk for this long about the recap but i just thought i need the context for everything okay so there was a scene with the rooftop scene if you read the book and you watch the movie you know what i'm talking about the rooftop scene where ryle comes out onto the the the, the rooftop and he's like throwing chairs around and she doesn't yet know how the story's gonna go, as in Lily the character, doesn't yet know how the story's gonna go, but this was like the first red flag that you look back on and think, ah, should have left that one in the drafts, like that whole relationship. Turns out Ryan Reynolds was the one that wrote the scene, and by wrote he means like, they mean like rewrote the scene, because I guess um, Blake was going through and like over the script and it just wasn't working in her mind. At the time, apparently that was when the strike was happening, like the writer's strike, so if they went in and like rewrote the script, they would be in violation of that strike. But Blake essentially with Ryan sat down one night, I guess, that's how I'm like em envisioning it, and they rewrote the script. No one knew about that, including the writers and Justin Baldoni until Blake said it on the red carpet while promoting the movie. So this whole time people thought she just like improvised it. Turns out she rewrote the whole scene. Now Justin apparently didn't know about this and it's a big deal because obviously it is in violation of the writer's strike, allegedly. Could not be, could be some like technicality about the fact that it wasn't like officially written down on paper during work hours. Like maybe there's some way that they will get around this, but E.T. can confirm that Ryan Reynolds writing a scene for It Ends With Us that made it into the final cut of the film did indeed come as news to Justin Baldoni, who found out only after Blake Lively revealed it in a red carpet interview. Someone said, wow, I hate this because honestly, I've never been a Blake fan at all, but I love Ryan Reynolds and love their dynamic together. Still do, but this is gross. The way she acted on this publicity tour is weird. Well, let's not talk about DV in a DV movie. As the director of the film, finding out that the praise for a scene in the movie you directed is not going to you, but a co-worker's husband and finding out his involvement in the film at the same time as the general public is epic to say the least. Now, some people are saying like, how as a director do you not know this? Like, were you just not doing your job well enough? But some people are saying that he's clearly being blindsided by these A-list celebrities, like this A-list celebrity couple, who is clearly pulling a lot of strings. Like clearly, Blake Lively just doesn't think she needs to listen to anyone else, doesn't need to get permission to do anything. Yeah, he's the director, but she can just do whatever she wants. And that's kind of become clear throughout this whole promo that she just doesn't, care. She's like, I will do it however I want to do it. Now, Destructify wrote an article saying, why are people calling Ryan Reynolds a scab? Now, scab is when you obviously go against the writer's strike, if you guys don't know. It's because of something Blake Lively said. So when the Writers Guild of America went on strike in summer 2023, it put a long pause on film and television productions. Writers couldn't write, revise, or basically do anything at that point until an agreement was reached with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. So you can imagine, obviously, if you're not able to, as a writer, work on a script that you we're working on it at some point. It could literally be half written, but you can't work on it until you guys come to an agreement. And because of that, Blake Lively was basically like, oh, my husband just wrote it. Like that's obviously going against the writer strike. So strike lasted from May to September when the writers and studios made a tentative deal that eventually got ratified the following month. So I bring this up. Well, it has to do with Ryan Reynolds and whether his wife, Blake Lively, may have outed him as a scab, AKA strike breaker, when she said he wrote a scene for it ends with us. So yeah, she told E! News that Ryan had actually written a key part in the film. The iconic rooftop scene, my husband actually wrote it. Nobody knows that but you now. And it ends with us began production three days after the strike began in May 2023 and was temporarily shut down on June 5th. Obviously, after Blake made the comments about her husband writing the film's rooftop scene, people began wondering if Ryan, who's a member of the WGA, with screenwriting credits for Deadpool 2 and Deadpool and Wolverine, had written the scene during the strike. But Variety reported via a source close to Ryan that he'd actually worked on the scene in April 2023, which put him in the clear. So obviously this is now one word against another. He's saying he worked on it in April. Some people are saying he's worked on it after the strike was in action, in motion. So E.T. can confirm that Ryan Reynolds writing a scene for Ends With Us that made it into the final cut of the film did indeed come as news to Justin Baldoni, who found out only after Blake Lively revealed it on a red carpet interview. Uh, so this is just another chapter in the feud between them, and that's that's that aspect of things. Now, Justin Baldoni has now posted another kind of resource to survivors of DV. This is a letter to a kind of dear survivor, mainly if you've like watched the movie or something. And yeah, so he's written this whole thing again. Now, some people think this is just pandering. Some people think 
But that's always going to be a thing. Like some people are just going to think that he's pandering. Some people are going to think that Blake Lively's not doing enough, that he's doing way more, or that he's doing too much. Like there's always going to be something. Now, Blake has kind of allegedly spoken out. This is Mary Claire. Blake Lively has spoken out amid the It Ends With Us backlash. Oh, and apparently it was a box office hit. It earned 30 million pounds in its opening weekend. But yeah, obviously a lot of controversy to do with that. So while Lively has remained silent amidst the past few weeks of controversy, the 37 year old spoke out this weekend for the first time since the backlash, sharing a message to Instagram stories. And the message in question was a review from Collider stating Blake Lively excels in portraying Lily's transformation. It's such a Blake Lively thing to do. The actress has not commented further on the film's reception, but members of her family, including her sister, Robin Lively and brother-in-law Bart Johnson. If you don't know who Bart Johnson is, he's the one that played Zac Efron's dad in High School Musical. Have released statements in defense of the star, not to mention her friends with Lively's It Ends With Us co-star Brandon Sklenar releasing a statement to Instagram. So he released this that I didn't talk about, which says, hey everyone, I wanted to take a minute and address all this stuff swirling online. Colleen and the women of this cast stand for hope, perseverance, and for women choosing a better life for themselves. Vilifying the woman who put so much of their heart and soul into making this film because they believe so strongly in its message seems counterproductive and detracts from what this film is about. It is in fact the opposite of the point. What may or may not have happened behind the scenes does not and hopefully should not detract from what our intentions were in making this film. It's been disheartening to see the amount of negativity being projected online. This is a bunch of just like, well these women wanted to make this movie and write this book and so therefore we can't criticize them at all because because I don't know and so I guess the Blake Lively has spoken out is like through her co-stars and through her family members if you guys remember this interview that I spoke out about the Blake Lively interview that made me want to quit my job it's now on 4.7 million views from three weeks ago it's now been reported that the interview at the time was struggling with infertility and so that comment was interesting from Blake obviously she couldn't have known but maybe that's why you shouldn't say certain things just in case it ends like this and she has now posted a response on her channel uh, the real reason my Blake Lively interview went viral and the reason for that is uh, that I got contacted by another reporter who told me a story that was a little similar to this one that he had experienced and then we started talking about comparing notes about this and then um, I just felt like you know what it's not okay to behave like that and I think it needs to be called out and so that's the why the reason why I did that now so much later. And also because it took me a while, to be honest with you, it took me a while to actually get over it. Uh, it affected me for a while because it made me nervous uh, when I was interviewing other people after that. And I blamed myself for it for a long time because I felt like I did or said something wrong. And um, that's the reason why I waited so long. And uh, I actually hadn't read up about all the other controversy that was going on with Blake Lively and her mo new movie, It Ends With Us. So um, it was kind of a coincidence, I have to say, that this ended up being posted right now i also have to say thank you to everyone who contacted me and sent me beautiful messages i'm so she didn't post it because this drama was happening because it did happen like she posted the video and then everything kind of happened so it was kind of weird timing but yeah apparently blake has been talked about by reporters that have had a bad experience with her now a lot of other videos have been posted of her just throughout her whole career from gossip girl on to now just not really getting along with her co-stars a lot of people saying that she's just rude but then she has this like sunshine aura and ryan reynolds is so charming and funny that i think she was just getting away with it until now so apparently she's been a bully for a while always had this side to her as you won't believe what she once called her gossip girl co-stars chuck has a matching pet monkey with coordinating outfits and i was like i would love to be part of the show but i can't act with a monkey <laughs> and then i got and a few of them <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it was a joke. That's right, monkeys, and she has always. Yeah, so we obviously bringing up past interviews where she didn't look the best. I think some of this might be a little bit stretched at this point. It's like, yeah, she might have made some crap jokes a while back. It doesn't mean that she's awful, but there is that thing about Leighton Meester not being friends with her after the filming Gossip Girl and at the time of filming it. People saying that it's because Leighton is an introvert, but maybe now it's coming out that Blake is just not the nicest to be around. And Bopping has been posting a lot of this stuff. So this is 10 celebs who dissed Blake Lively. And at the beginning, we have the Leighton Meester interview that people were talking about. I think I'm just brunette because of the books. Not Everyone it. knows blondes are nicer anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Blake Lively has had issues with many celebrities, both past and present, and you won't believe some of the names on this list. Before Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively were a thing, he was married to Scarlett Johansson in 2008 before splitting in 2010. Do you know what also happened in 2010? The filming of Green Lantern featuring none other than Ryan and Blake. The filming started in March 2010 and ended in August 2010. People on set said they could feel the chemistry between Ryan and Blake, which was intense. They were giggly and flirty and had non-stop touching with each other on that set. The crazy thing about this is that they were both in relationships then, with Blake dating Penn Badgley and Ryan being married to Scarlett. Their press tour for Green
for Green Lantern clearly showed that Ryan and Blake had something going on between them. Even though they claimed to be just friends, they spent lots of time alone together, and Ryan once said he knew he crossed a line. Three months after the press tour, Blake broke up with Penn. In the same month, Ryan announced his split from Scarlett, who said Ryan was never home towards the end of their marriage. However, Scarlett once spoke about the implications of being with a fellow actor without mentioning names, saying, the logistics of being with another actor are challenging, especially when two people's careers are going at the same rate. Even if one person is more successful than the other, that also proves challenging. There may be a competitive thing. Since she's now married to Colin Jost, who has a different profession, it's believed that the actress was referring to Ryan. However, Scarlett also said that competition can affect a relationship with a fellow actor, and it was rumored that it was one of the reasons she and Ryan divorced. In 2010, a source told Daily Mail an unconfirmed report that says, Ryan can be an overbearing control freak. He's more traditional, and she's more independent. The speculations revealed that Ryan didn't like to see Scarlett become more successful than he was. And with It Ends With Us drama and how Ryan rewrote some of the dialogue, people are beginning to connect the dots that he might like controlling his partner's business. The rumors- So there was some infidelity apparently. Apparently Ryan Reynolds is not as charming as everyone seems to think he is. Then we have, I saw a few TikToks about this still on my For You page. There was this one about how people were saying like, what are these Justin Bardo new resources for DV even doing? Like, are they changing anything? And does Blake Lively need to be criticized for not posting them? And I guess this is showing that those phone numbers and stuff can come in handy. Proof that resources for DV are badly needed. Maybe Blake could have, could have memorized a hotline number or two. And I think this is a woman's bathroom where um, obviously you can rip off the phone number. And I think when maybe you are already in a crappy situation, and by crappy I mean awful, awful situation, just that little push can make a massive difference. I think that's what people are talking about with maybe Blake Lively could have been that push for someone else essentially, mainly because she did agree to take on this movie. And I think there was a lot of conversation about how, like maybe she doesn't feel comfortable talking about it because she has a past of DV and blah, blah. And it's like, she just could have not taken that movie role then. And with how lighthearted she is about everything, I just don't see that being the explanation. Uh, but there's also this of people making fun of the movie and the outfits in the movie because they were awful. Like I know that's not how I envisioned Lily from the book to dress. So this is just a lighthearted end <laughs> to our video today. That's literally what the outfits look like. Yep, precisely. So yeah, there's stuff like this where it's just like unnecessary layering. So yeah, let's just end it on a good note today. But yeah, I think that'll be the end of the It Ends With Us drama for a while until maybe the second movie's in production and then we'll find out way more. Or someone will do like a bombshell, here's everything that happened on set and I would love to hear that one. Subscribe to the bell icon for engagement. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.